A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. In this episode we are going to be adding some layout functionality to our hands, giving you the ability to either um, have the ability to check out different layouts easily by changing some parameters so you can see like what kind of a hand layout you would like to have in your game or possibly something that you could use for your user to expose so that they could themselves configure their hand layout a little bit by making use of the variables that we've created so far. Uh, so to start off what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up our HUD, our card HUD uh, where we currently only have this add card button. Uh, we're going to be adding more functionality to uh, this now. So starting off, we have a vertical box here where we have a, a card button inside of it with its text. Uh, we want to now add, I think, a horizontal box here as well. Actually, let's do it like this. Uh, horizontal. And we add that to our vertical box, so it uh, ends up below the add card button. Uh, that means that it's going to be just below that now then. Uh, inside of this we want to have a few different elements. We want to have first of all something called a slider I believe. So we have a, a slider here. Um, if you bring a slider out that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm not super fond of this specific one. Uh, so we'll use a different one and delete this one. I think it's called, was it spin? Spin box. So if you drag out the spin box, you can see that it sort of is sort of like a slider. You have some values you can set here and it looks a little bit better in my opinion. Of course, this is a matter of preference. You can use whatever you want. Uh, but for our purposes here, we're going to put that inside of our horizontal box. and. In addition to that, we're also going to be adding a text. The text will be describing uh, what this horizontal box spinner is belonging to or what it does. So starting off, we can change the name of the first one to be card angle. And um, the, the values for the spin box here, you can see that it has a value, a preset value. We could have something like, I don't know, one. This will represent our degree, so this will be the default value. You can also set a minimum and maximum value here, so you can have a sort of um, allowed range range of uh, degrees. So you could have like zero, you could have something like 15 as max, something like that. Uh, just something so you have like a, a range to move in between. We can already see that the actual spin box itself is getting very small amounts of space here so we might want to increase our width of our vertical box here so instead of size 100 maybe we want uh, 600 something like that i guess and then that doesn't show very much so far but if we go in here uh, let's see here our elements don't take up a whole lot of space right now, so if we remove size to content, yeah, there we go, we should be getting that amount of space in the width. Uh, the horizontal box here is claiming to take up all of the space when it comes to uh, horizontal space here. We want to change, we don't want to fill vertically, we want to top align this, I believe will be better. And when it comes to the individual parts inside of it, uh, in the, the spin box and the angle, we want to make sure that they take up as much space as they can. So we essentially give them like half of it each. Uh, so clicking in fill in both of these will make them try to fight for the space that they have. So if we have it just on the spin box, it will take up all the space except for what's needed for the text. But if we give the text fill as well, they'll get 50-50 here. And yeah, I think that this looks fine for us. Um, so we might want to create a few more of these. So we'll just right click and duplicate. And duplicate. Duplicate. I think maybe we'll need six or seven or something like that. 
So we have a few duplicated here now. Uh, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so let's make the second one, um, the, not say card angle, but instead say uh, peak x displacement. So this will be the the text that, uh, or the text, the values that are controlling how much we're moving our rightmost hand parts of our cards uh, to decide to be able to read the card. Uh, as a default value for the spin box, we can put something, I don't know, maybe 250 or something like that might be reasonable. Uh, let's give it a minimum and maximum range of zero to 500 perhaps. Um, let's open up another one, change the text to be peak y uh, displacement. Uh, so this will be just like the other one. It will be what uh, drives our uh, horizontal, no, vertical values. Uh, we can set this to have a default value of, since we want it to go upwards, we'll have a minus 100, which means that our minimum value needs to be below that as well. So minus 200 to zero might be a reasonable value. And then we want to get this part and we want to rename this part and say arc height. So this will correspond to our values for uh, the height changes that we had um, depending on how far it is from the center of the hand. So we'll give it a initial value of, I don't know, maybe zero and give it uh, from zero to 50, something like that. Um, the second to last one we can call the we have card spacing left so we can use that one um card spacing currently we had set to something i don't know maybe 100 or something but we can try something smaller 50 and allow something 50 to maybe i don't know 200 so you have some some range there these are of course values that you can arrange uh, how you feel make more sense for you um we can fill another one for uh, animation speed and uh, this value we can s I think we had as default 10 and uh, we can set it somewhere in the range of 0 to 50 maybe something like that um, yeah so, so now we're essentially going to be binding these things to be able to control the values that we have as variables in our code for our card hand um, so we will be using the the card, you, the card HUD to communicate to the card hand widget, um, sending through its information to it as it is being changed over here. Uh, to do that, we need to go to each of these um, elements and say that we want to have our on value changed event happening. So now we have the one on the spin box. Before we actually do this, let's go back to the designer. Let's make sure we have some better names here. So this spin box, we can call the uh, card angle spin box. And the next one, peak x spin box. That's turned out to be a little bit duplicated. Uh, I tend to want to have uh, the type in the variable name sometimes just to be able to see what it is uh, from the variable side. Uh, so this will be the peak y spin box you can choose different names than this if you want of course uh, arc height spin box and card spacing spin box and lastly animation speed spin box now that we have all of these names we compile and save everything as well um, we can go to our event graph again and we have this uh, card angle spin box here now uh, we want to make sure that for all, all our different spin boxes so we have our animation speed one over here we want to add its value changed we want to have arc height value changed uh, Card angle is the one we had, card spacing we want to add for, uh, peak x we want to add for, and peak y we want to add for. So now we should have six different 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so we have six different uh, events now that will all trigger whenever you do a change to one of these uh, corresponding spin boxes that we have created, right? So now all we want to do is relay this information to our card hand. So we'll create a blueprint interface for this. We open up our content browser, go to blueprints, uh, blueprint interface. We can call this something like uh, BPI underscore change card um, layout. All right, we hook it up there and then we change this function to be called set card angle. And it takes as an input a float value and say uh, new card angle. Create a new function, call this one set peak x. Another input of the type float, we can call this one set or uh, new peak x. And then we create another function one input, again a float, new peak y, we rename it to set peak y as well, create another function, um, set arc height, in parameter is going to be new arc height, create another function, set uh, card X spacing new card X spacing as the input variable name and lastly we had what was it uh, set animation speed and we'll have an input of the type float and new animation speed right so now we created all of those uh, Let's go save everything. Inside of our card hand now, we need to make sure that we implement this interface. So we'll go to class settings and we'll go implemented interfaces, BPI changed card layout, which allows them to appear over here in our interfaces grouping. So we'll just make sure to add all of these by implementing all of them. Okay, uh, so animation speed, we should have a variable for, there we go. So we set the animation speed to be this value. Uh, card spacing, we have over here. Arc height, we have over here. Peak X is our card X displacement. Actually, this one was the Y one, so we'll do the X one over here. Then we'll do the Y one and set that one over here. And lastly, we have the card angle. Like so. Okay, so now we're communicating that information to our card hand as well. We are not yet sending this information, however, so we'll go back to our card hub and make sure that we get a reference to our card hand widget. And we'll say uh, card angle. And we'll get one that says BPI message over here. Like so, and make sure that we send the new value in over there. And then we'll create this widget reference for all of these different events so that we have it. And then we'll do a set animation speed is this one. This one is set arc height, get that one. And this one is the set card spacing. Uh, 
This one is the set peak x. And this one is the set peak y. So now we're sending all of this information from our card UI, our card HUD over to our card hand. I'll compile and save as well. Uh, but the only thing that's left now is if we go to our card hand, um, we are getting the information, but we are not acting upon it. Uh, because again, we're setting this information, but we're not actually uh, updating our card positions. So we'll do an update card positions after each of these uh, messages that we're getting. Because we need to recalculate how our hand looks like uh, if we have changed the angle, for example, for it to uh, take place and actually be uh, visually represented by a card hand. All right, so let's take a look at what we have created and so far. So now we have our little widget up here with our different parameters. So we can add our different cards. So let's add a bunch of different cards. Uh, so now we have these cards here and they work like we expect them from uh, earlier with our movements and everything like that. Uh, to start off, we have the card angle by dragging our card angle around. You can see that it changes uh, how they're angled. We can go and change our arc position to see how it's going to be changed depending on how far it's offset from the center. We can change our card spacing, we can change our animation speed, which of course is going to be represented by if we're peaking, for example, like this. And so if we change our animation speed to be high, we'll be much snappier in how we're doing it. And if we set it to something low, it's of course going to be more gradual than it is, was before. A animation speed of zero, of course, is going to be like immediate. There's no, not gonna be an animation at all. It's just gonna be putting it at the position it wants. Um, in addition to that, we also have our peak displacements. So we have currently that we're putting the cards pretty far to the right if we're peaking here. We can set this down to something like 100. Now it's not enough to actually read it, but you have the possibility to configure this to be how much you want it to be. The Y displacement, how far up it goes, is of course going to be a negative value. So a higher negative value means it goes up higher and a value towards zero means it will be peaking much less. So yeah, now we have the ability to actually configure how our hand is supposed to look like just based on parameters that we're sending through our Blueprint interface from our card HUD to our card hand. This can of course be further uh, added upon with uh, new parameters and new variables to access as you continue to build upon this if you were to build upon it. Uh, but for now, let's uh, just take a moment and go through what we have done today in this episode. Uh, so what we have done is we have gone into our designer and we have added some um, uh, elements to our UI that allows us to communicate that we want to have different values. Uh, these widgets are created by spin boxes that have a minimum, a maximum, and also a default value. These values, we then, when we get those events for them having been changed, we funnel through a blueprint interface that we've created that sends them over to our card hand. Our card hand, on the other hand, is receiving this information, setting the variables that it makes use of in its, um, uh, in its code, and then updates the card position, which then calls the calculate card position and then starts repositioning the cards based on all of the uh, variables that we have changed around. Anyway, that's going to be all for this one. Uh, keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.